Hello, my name is Grant Fritchie. I'm the Scary DBA. I work for Redgate Software. Let's talk about baselines. Let's talk about the concept of monitoring. Let's talk about the concept of performance. When you get that phone call, and we all get that phone call, hey, the server's running slow. The real answer, the immediate answer you should give, and the one that's probably not all that helpful, is slow as compared to what? Slow as compared to yesterday, slow as compared to last week, slow as compared to what you would want. You don't have a basis for what defines slow unless you're able to compare it to something. You can't just simply say something is slow. You have to say it's slow in comparison to what it previously was, what it would like it to be, to some other server. You've got to be able to come up with these comparisons. So, while monitoring, you're going to collect information and it's going to be able to be useful to you. You'll see CPU, you'll see weight stats, you'll see other interesting things going up and down and that's all really great. But, how useful is it? Well, it's not that useful unless you can compare one to another and understand your peaks, your valleys, whether or not they're normal or not, whether or not you're seeing trends, whether or not you're seeing kind of behaviors that you're used to seeing. A baseline is a measure against which you can compare. Now, a lot of people think a baseline should be a, you know, against a system that's clean, you know, we'll just we'll just measure the system when it's clean. That's that's nuts. A real good baseline is measuring the system under load. An even better baseline is being able to compare, you know, Monday to Monday, Monday to Wednesday, this week to last week, the previous three weeks to this week, all that kind of stuff. And we've got it for you. SQL Monitor from Redgate Software has got a whole new baseline utility. It's amazing. Let's take a look at it. This is the analysis page in SQL Monitor. This is where you can go to get a look at different counters, different metrics um, on your machines, and get an idea of you know, how they've been performing over time. For example, this is a really simple measure. This is just a measure of processor time, just a you know indication of load. And we're looking at um, the last hour um, of today on a production server. And you can see the various you know usage of the CPU, how it's gone up and down. Now, a really simple baseline would just be to do a comparison. Um, say, now to one hour earlier, or now to, say, seven days earlier. So this week to last week. Now, that's a really simple comparison. And that one's easy, right? You've got two sets of metrics, and it's pretty much you know what you would expect to see. But now let's do this. Let's click on this little extend baseline thing here. And now what we've got, and I, I do agree this is a little bit messy, but it depends on the type of metric that you're looking at. What we've got is going back in time the last seven weeks of data. And you can see your metric compared to all those other metrics going backwards in time. The darker metrics are the more recent, the lighter metrics are further and further back in time. Let's clean it up just a little bit and go just to the last four weeks. Okay, so now we've narrowed it down. Now we're looking at just four weeks of material. And so you can see this week to last week, we had you know some similarities in the comparison for this given hour. And if you also look back in time, we can see that there's also very similar um, activity occurring each point in back going back in time over this four week period it shows that some of these spikes actually correlate to normal behavior on the system that there's timed things or things occurring within a certain time range um, on a normal basis and we can see it right here inside of our graph another way to look at this stuff though is with regions now I like the lines they're useful but I get really excited about the regions I love this thing this is great so what we're seeing now is my timeline, which is that dark blue line going across the screen. And then we've got two areas of, of light in the background, the light blue and the dark blue. The dark blue is the average over the time period that we've defined. In this case, the last four weeks, right? We're comparing this, this hour to the previous um, hour seven days ago and, and going back three more weeks beyond that. And so the dark blue is the average over that time. And the light blue is the peaks 
and valleys over that time. Now there is a little bit of um, you know cleanup going on just to cut down the noise on it. So there's a bit of normalizing. You know, there's some some smoothing that's occurring. So while we did see on the lines, let's go back to that for a second. Some of the peaks were higher than what we see here on the averages. But that's okay because it does give you just the general indication of, of how things are behaving and that's what you want to know. Now why am I so excited about this? The reason I'm so excited about this is because I immediately can see by and large my CPU stays within the average, right? So I'm not seeing abnormal behavior. I've now got a real comparison to of my current activity to other activities. But even better still, I get an idea of whether or not my peaks and valleys are staying within the norms of the peaks and valleys over the over those previous four weeks. And so while I've got slight deviations in a couple of places, nothing is major. And so by and large, I'm very much operating within the norm on this system. So if I did just receive that phone call, the server's running slow, oh my gosh, you've got to do something about it. I can go in here and take a look and say, well, okay, let's say the CPU was the metric I was interested in, and granted, we may look at other metrics and may look at other things at other times, but we're just going to use that for our example. In this case, I would know that, well, no, I don't, I don't think I'm seeing anything outside of the norm on this server. You know, we take a look at the lines, it's laid out pretty normally, there's no real shock. And if I look at the regions, it's laid out very normally, there's no real shock. I suspect there's something else going on, I may need to look at something else, I may need to look at other counters within my server, or the problem may not lie within SQL Server, because as we all know, the problem usually doesn't lie within SQL Server. Now, if you don't like these, you want to get rid of them, you can go back up here to the X, pull them right back off. If you need to get rid of the other comparison, you can pull that right back off. And it's real simple to pick another counter. Um, if you wanted to say, look at, um, you know, uh, you're concerned about recompilations per second over time, you can take a look at that. Let's look at a larger time range. Uh, we'll look at a 24-hour time range so we get an idea what's going on over 24 hours. So, for example, we've got a lot of compiles going on there. Now let's compare that to a baseline, and we see some the peaks that we are getting are fairly normal within the range. We occasionally can see some deviation. Let's extend that baseline again, and now we see that by and large we've got a very, very normal behavior across this thing for a 24-hour period. It's behaving almost exactly the same way across the entire data set over the last seven weeks. Interesting bit of information, interesting bit of behavior. And you can see that the peaks that we do have here are roughly in line with the other peaks that have occurred. You know, I mean, there's some other peaks that have been going on. We've got a few valleys. But again, it's this fascinating view on the information, so which allows us to have a live baseline, a baseline that is against the data that we have, a baseline that is reflective of the data we have, and it's really, really great. So we get to see how our system is behaving for real. Um, let's look at one more metric, because uh, I just love these things. Um, let's look at um, latch wait time. It's one of my favorite metrics. And so it loads up the screen, and now we get to see latch wait time, and now we actually see some deviations. We see some differences, uh, some variations in the last 24 hours over what's going on within the last week. We do see correlations, right, in this region. The peaks that are here are fairly normal but we've got a deviation right here. This 24 hours that we're looking at is slightly different than what's gone on before. We are way outside of the average and we are also way outside of the previous peaks. Let's take a look at the lines just to see if there's any kind of, you know, see if the normalization has, has given us a, a, a false picture, but it hasn't. We really are looking at some deviation right here. This is something that you may want to drill down on and understand what's going on. It could be that there was something going on at that point in time because the latch weights that you're getting are very different than what they are normally. 
and um, you can see it because of the ability to look at this baseline. I'm just endlessly excited about this new functionality and uh, it's going to be in your hands really really soon so make sure you get your um, SQL monitor systems upgraded. Let's do one more thing with this. In addition to the ability to baseline, in addition to the ability to look at the you know current metric against other metrics, you can also add metrics to the chart so we can compare one metric to another. So let's take a look at uh, full scans per second and now we've got that also on our chart and we can begin to see some correlation between um, scans and the fact that we've got this um, long latch weight and the scans were higher too. So you can control multiple metrics, get baselines for any one metric but display other metrics alongside them and be able to compare all these things one to another um, to achieve correlation to understand what's going on inside your server all through SQL uh, Monitor from Redgate Software. All right, hope you found that interesting. My name is Grant Fritchie. I'm the Scary DBA. I work for Redgate Software.